In our urban world, in the streets where we walk, in the buses we take, in the magazines we read, on walls, on screens, we are surrounded by images of an alternative way of life. We may remember or forget these images, but briefly we take them in, and for a moment they stimulate our imagination, either by way of memory or anticipation. But where is this other way of life? It's a language of words and images which calls out to us wherever we go, whatever we read, wherever we are. Where do they exist, these fabulous rewards and objects and people? Where do they belong to? Here, there, or nowhere? They come with us everywhere. We take them away in our minds. We see them in our dreams. Publicity proposes to each of us in a consumer society that we change ourselves or our lives by buying something more. And this more, publicity persuades us, will make us in some way richer, even though we will be poorer by having spent our money. And publicity persuades us of this transformation by showing us people who have apparently been transformed and are, as a result, enviable. This state of being envied is what constitutes glamour. And publicity is the process of manufacturing glamour. Glamour is supposed to go deeper than looks, but it depends upon them utterly. Glamour works through the eye and the mirror. Oh yes, this is Oliver, if you go up this. Well, Oliver, I'm not a professional hairdresser. Can you, get, can you get the tangle out for that? Glamour is for everybody who believes they can be glamorous, or perhaps more accurately, for everybody who finds that they cannot afford not to be glamorous. Yes, keep the fringes free, uh, Oliver. The setting in which glamour is here being created is an old one, a large country house now turned into a public park. These parklands and trees were once laid out in the same spirit as the landscapes in oil paintings, in which idealized nymphs and goddesses played. Now, the model has taken the place of the goddess. Yet glamour is a new idea. For those who once lived in the country houses and owned the classical oil paintings, the idea of glamour did not exist. Ideas of grace, elegance, authority amounted to something apparently similar, but fundamentally very different. 
When everybody's place in society is more or less determined by birth, personal envy is a less familiar emotion. And without social envy, glamour cannot exist. Envy becomes a common emotion in a society which has moved towards democracy and then stopped halfway, where status is theoretically open to everyone, but enjoyed by only a few. Glamour is new, society has changed. But the oil painting and the publicity image have much in common. And we only fail to see this because we think of one as fine art and the other as commerce. Sometimes publicity impersonates a painting. Boys are posed to match the boyhood of Raleigh. Real people pose, like the figures in Manet's Déjeuner sur l'herbe. A man dresses up to look like a portrait by Hals. Sometimes works of art are used to give prestige to a publicity scene. A doodle by Michelangelo. A painting by Rubens. A painting by Dürer. A whole sea by Hokusai. <laughs> 